Livia's Kitchen. For anyone that isn't familiar with the brand, Livia's Kitchen is an incredible natural range of gluten-free vegan treats. It's stocked nationwide in retailers such as Tesco's, Whole Foods, Sainsbury's, WH Smith's, to name a few. Um, so welcome, Olivia. Hello. 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 Thank you so much for coming in to discuss your business. Thank today. you for having me. Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, I'd like to start by asking you, what inspired you to start your business? Where did the idea come from? So, um, just before I start talking, how many of you guys know about my brand? Is it new to most of you? Who knows about it? Put your hand up. Okay, a few of you. Um, so, I don't bore you too much. I'll, I'll just do this quickly. I was diagnosed with a whole host of food intolerances about four and a half years ago now. So, I was told I couldn't eat things like wheat, dairy, also things like garlic, onion. My life became very, very difficult, very restricted almost overnight. Um, and I've been someone who just always loved indulging, eating sweet, yummy, delicious treats every single day. So when I was told I couldn't do that anymore, because I couldn't have a frosted cupcake or a jam donut, I was like, this is rubbish. There has to, there has to be a way that I can fix this. And so that was the problem, and I wanted my company to be the solution. Thank you. So um, once you had your business idea, how did you go about launching it? Um, so I had the idea, um, pretty much overnight I started doing recipe testing in my parents' kitchen. I was still living at home with my parents, so luckily had a nice kitchen to be doing all my development work in. Um, I'd never ever done anything in food or business before. Uh, I'd been studying neuroscience for five years before that, so very unrelated, very, very different. Um, and I had this idea and I knew that if I was really going to make it something serious, I needed to go on some sort of business course. So I enrolled myself on the six week fast track MBA that my university where I was studying offered. Um, and I did that at the same time as doing this recipe development. And so I was doing all of this testing in my kitchen, trying to learn how to make these treats without the conventional flour, butter, sugar. Um, and the, business, the, the business course that I went on almost was like a Dragon's Den type of course and at the end I had to pitch in front of the 40 other companies and three investors. So there was like 150 people there and I've never done a pitch like that, never spoken in public before and won that and so I got a £12,000 grant from that. So there was my first pot of money there and about five weeks after winning that, that's when we got stocks in Selfridges. So it was like 12 weeks from having the idea to be invested in Selfridges and the company has kind of grown so that, at that pace ever since. God, wow, that's really amazing. <laughs> um, so, because you make it sound so easy. Um, it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> what was the main kind of challenge you faced in the first stage, do you feel? Um, well, there were loads because at, at, in the first stage I was making everything, packing everything, distributing everything. Then also trying to do all my hustling, selling, all of um, the admin, the finance. And I think the, the thing that I wasn't good at at the beginning was delegating. I wanted to be an expert in everything. I wanted to take control of everything. And because I was the founder and it was my idea and my business, I wanted to really keep control. And so I think I held on to things maybe too long without bringing people in quick enough who can help me. So I've learned now definitely not to pretend that I'm an expert in everything and to put my hands up and, and say other people can do certain things better than I can. Um, when you first had your finished product, how did you go about approaching retailers? I know you just mentioned that self just came about quite quickly, but yeah. was that a kind of automatic thing? No, so, so when I started so four years ago, we, we're kind of so used to social media now, but Instagram then was still quite a new phenomenon and what I did was I focused as much on social media as I did on the product itself. So I always tell people that my product kind of sits at the core of the business and then around the business there's this like halo of social media. Social media is just so crucial um, to every part of the business. And so I started putting out all of my messages, all these photos on social media and with my parents in a delivery truck, I started delivering all of our products to 
anyone and everyone with some sort of social media following. So press houses, um, magazines, fashion influencers, anyone. Um, and it was one day I delivered them to Vogue and about two hours afterwards I looked at my phone and I had gone from 200 followers on Instagram to three and a half thousand and I was like what happened and Vogue had posted saying we've just had the most delicious delivery of these treats watch out for this company it's going to be huge we can't wait um, so then I used that post copied and pasted it into every single email going forward to buyers who had been ignoring me for weeks and suddenly I got meetings. So it was really having that endorsement from both that really helped me. Gosh, wow, that's, yeah, that's amazing. Um, I wanted to ask a question a little bit for myself. I hope everyone else is interested as well. Um, consumers are more engaged now about where their food comes from, how it's made, how it's produced. Have you found it a challenge finding the right suppliers and manufacturers for all of these kitchens? Yeah, it, it's, been, it's been a real challenge. So one of the things that, um, well, probably the, the paramount thing that I feel most strong about is that I don't want to use any additives, any preservatives in our products. So everything is completely natural. And in the confectionery world, that's unheard of. So when you buy your standard confectionery on the shelf, a lot of that will have one, two year shelf life. And the reason why is because it has a number of um, additive preservatives, E numbers, they put things in sh like shellac in your Maltesers, for example, which is what I have on my nails right now. It's not, it's not ideal. And so we needed to find a way to create these delicious indulgent treats, but with none of those additives. So we're using the, finest, most simple, natural, premium ingredients. Um, and supermarkets looked at us and said, well, you've got a three month shelf life. And the, the way that we justify that is by saying, yes, but look at the ingredients that we're using. Look at how much I know about these ingredients. Look at how much I know about the benefits of them, that I know about who my suppliers are. And other confectionery brands don't really, they, that's not how they sell in their products and that's how we do it. So it, it's something very different. That's amazing, you've turned it into a strength. Yeah, of a yeah absolutely. Um, I was going to ask, so over the last year, your distribution has increased by 7,000%. <laughs> um, expanding from... <laughs> That's number. It's huge. Um, expanding from 30 stores to over 2,000 stores across the UK. Um, can you give us some insight into any kind of pivotal moments that brought such a drastic, dramatic change about? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, Probably about 14 months ago, there were still four people in my company. Um, and I think that goes back to what I was saying before, that I wasn't that good at hiring people fast enough um, and admitting that maybe I needed more help than I really did. Um, but it, in around October time last year, I really noticed that I needed some help and it was the time then to really grow. So I brought in a commercial director um, who had worked previously at Grays and before that at L'Oreal for 10 years. And she really, she's almost, she's almost like a business partner now. Um, we work so closely with each other. And I think it was her, she, you know, she's more experienced than I am in so many areas. And she came in and we really complemented each other. And together we built out the team even further. So we're now 12 people. And we're probably going to be 15, 16 by springtime. So I think it's really about bringing the right people in with the right expertise um, and building your team in, a, in the right sustainable way. Great, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask also, how has the process of working with big retailers been for you? How have you found it? Have they all approached you or after you sent out that email, you had to then kind of go back and they've come back and how's yeah. it kind of... Um, so this is normally, normally the question where people start giving me evils when I give, when I give the answer because um, we've had a really exceptional um, circumstance. Our, it's not usual what has happened with our company and retailers, um, but because of my social media, we've been approached by all of the major retailers. So in terms of Tesco, Sainsbury's, Boots, WH Smith, Waitrose, Ocado, there's been no reaching out from our side. It's been the buyers reaching out to us saying, Olivia, I've been following you for 18 months, I'm now the buyer at Tesco. Anyway, you want to come in? I'm like, oh, check my diary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll come in. 
Um, and actually, it's been incredible working with them because it's the only way that they are going to grow and sustain their business is by supporting companies like me. So they are really backing us. Um, it, it, it's, it's really phenomenal how much we have been supported by them. They've cut listing fees, for example, so that we can go and be listed on their shelves. I don't know if you guys know how it works, but a lot of the retailers will often require you to actually pay to be on the shelf, as, as well as like certain overriders. Um, but with us, they just want our product to be on the shelf, so they've kind of culled all of that, and they just want us in. So our experience has been really great with all of them. We're, we're really fortunate. Um, and with growing at such an incredible rate, how have you found handling that pressure yourself, both in a professional and personal capacity? Has it has it taken its toll? <laughs> it's hard. Um, sometimes it's really, really, really hard. Um, having a holiday is really hard. Um, and up until last year, really, I didn't have one. I had three years where I, hand to heart, was working seven days a week, probably 18 hours a day, every, like, every single day. It, it was relentless. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone says, how do you have that work-life balance? For me, I, I can't really answer that question because this has become my life. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel that there's that distinction, really, between work and life. And it, it's not like when you see me on my Instagram, there's a completely different person to how you see me in real life. Like, this is me, and this is what I'm living for, and I feel so passionately about everything that we're doing and our mission, mm -hmm. so that when I'm working, it doesn't feel like I'm working, it's just what I'm meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, inevitably, it's been challenging, and you kind of sadly lose some friends along the way because you don't have time to see them, but I always say, if you do, the people weren't meant to be in your life anyway, the people who work stick around and... You know, they're there for you no matter how often you can see them. So it's definitely been hard, but it's well worth it. So do you feel the pain?